the body forms and the neck shapes and the CNC programs to be able to create an instrument. And the, uh, the result is here, and you guys will see this for the first time right now, the Super Dreadnought. So uh, how did Super Dreadnought come about? Joking around in the office. Uh, we're a bunch of gearheads, music nerds, so somebody's always coming in and, you know, playing the kid that's doing all of the Angus Young riffs or whatever it is. So this particular day, uh, it happened to be Black Sabbath, uh, and the song was Super Knot. And the conversation about Super Knot and talking about Black Sabbath and all of that just, it morphed into, you know, Martin being the Super Knot company. Well, we're the Dreadnought company, why don't we be the Super Dreadnought company? And that's, that's where the spark came from, the Super Dreadnought. What the hell would a Super Dreadnought look like? Uh, and our um, vice president of, uh, of product, Fred Green, you know, got the, got, the, got the essence of it in his head. He said, you know, the world right now is talking about great smaller guitars. You know, let's build a more petite parlor guitar. Can we do something that people can sit down on the couch and play? Let's make guitars smaller. And the world seemed to be talking about smaller guitars. And our reaction was just absolutely put a strong counterpoint to it and let's build the biggest freaking dreadnought that we ever have. And we'll call it the super dreadnought. So we get into researching the project and sure enough, just as there was a dreadnought class battleship last century, after that Dreadnought class battleship was replaced, it was replaced by a class of ships that were called Super Dreadnoughts, and they stayed in service until the 1960s, uh, last century. It was a real thing, and the owner of our company, uh, Chris Martin, is a real history buff, uh, and he was all into the, the, the lore and the story about the, about the Dreadnought and how it inspired Martin's original Dreadnought. And it was a bold statement on the water and the Martin Dreadnought was a bold statement for a musical instrument. And when we realized that the Super Dreadnought was a real thing, it was, it was sold at that point, you know. Then manufacturing gets involved and we invest in the tooling and the machinery uh, and start proving out the body forms. And for us, we're a big organization and we're a big manufacturing organization and we have to lobby for, for money to, to come up with new tooling and manufacturing infrastructure, the aluminum body forms that you've seen when you visited the factory. It, it takes a lot of auxiliary pieces to build modern instruments or to build instruments in our, our modern methodology. So we, uh, we invested a significant amount of time and a serious amount of resources to be able to produce reliably and in in volume uh, the the super dreadnought so it's it's so cool to be able to to bring it first uh, to our our expert dealers around the around the country and locations around the world which we're super pleased to be working with you guys at Russo So we're going to be talking on the order of three and a half, four years ago from initial conversation, slow down. You know, we were kind of taken out of the game for a little while with uh, with the uh, safety measures that 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 we employed there at the factory. So it's it's been a process of, I would say, around about four years. Is it proportionate? To a, like, is it almost like dragging the corner of a proportionate dreadnought shape? We're slightly, uh, slightly under half an inch wider at the top, and about six tenths of an inch wider here. So proportionally, it's it's very similar. Uh, the proportions uh, and the exterior perimeter don't deviate from our regular Martin dreadnought design. They're just larger. We blew it up a little bit. So we kept the, the, the dreadnought proportions that our enthusiasts love and we just grew them outwardly. So there are no funny angles to contend with or to have to apologize for. It's a dreadnought, just larger. Okay. 
we talk comparisons uh, in terms of internal air volume of the instrument. So all of our designs you know, have their, it's, it's, have their metric. It's what you have once the instrument's built. Uh, the CAD design programs can tell you approximately what that's going to be uh, on the finished prod, uh, product. The Super Dreadnought um, is approximately 20% larger, uh, greater internal air volume. So where the traditional Dreadnought for us is around a thousand cubic inches of internal air volume, the Super Dreadnought, we've been able to grow that uh, through the through the new dimensions uh, up to a little over 1200 cubic inches. So it's a nice lift in that internal air volume. For us, the the instrument body is is the speaker and you know the, the engineering challenge is to get the energy into the box, get the sound out of the box and the greater air volume, uh, the more the more headroom we can achieve with the instrument here. sound and you're nowhere near laying into that thing. Sonically, in the lab, it tested out about 12 decibels greater in volume than the traditional dreadnought. And, um, you know, when our audiologists are explaining to us what that means, uh, humans hear volume increases in a three decibel increment. And to be able to take that up to 12 decibels, that's a meaningful lift in output. So we were, we were interested to see what the, what the proof of the project would be. Uh, and we knew that we couldn't bring something to market that was gonna be vaporware. Uh, and to be able to generate a real lift in, in volume without having to play the instrument harder. You know, at all things being equal, the Super Dreadnought is louder but it's not louder to the point that it sacrifices harmonics, bass frequency, treble frequency. Uh, it's very well balanced due to its proprietary bracing structure. So it is a, it's, it's a, a well orchestrated instrument, it really performs well. VTS Top. Uh, VTS Top is a popular request through the custom shop. Uh, this is a premium Sitka top. Um, the color that you see uh, on the top is the, uh, is the effect of our VTS, which stands for Vintage Tone System. So it's a rapidly aged top. Uh, we use a, a, a series of heat and cooling cycles to, uh, to evacuate the remaining moisture from the top. Uh, it's not quite as simple as putting it in an oven and turning the, uh, turn the temperature up. Uh, we do go through a proprietary sequence of heating and cooling cycles. The, uh, the nice, even caramel color that you see across the top is the, is the effect of that heat treatment. Uh, it's not a toner color that's applied to it. This is a, a clear gloss on the top of our, our VTS product. Um, it sounds good. It brings its own tonal characteristic to the instrument. Um, we were working with an unproven body shape, so we felt that the VTS application would be appropriate. It helps minimize any movement once the instrument is in the field. So on, uh, on a brand new body size, you know, why risk having Mother Nature throw us a curveball with tops moving around a little bit? We can use the VTS and we can take that out of the equation and have a top that'll be stable from the day that it's delivered. So the bracing uh, strategy that we have on this one is the X brace that we that we gifted to the world, uh, but it's been optimized uh, for this new shape. So it is it's it has its own one of a kind bracing pattern that was engineered just just for this guitar. We were confident in the design that the instrument would have all the stability, all the integrity that we need. But what you really don't know is, is it gonna sound worth a damn when it's done? And the, uh, you know, the, the best part of the story is hearing these for the first time and just, we've heard dreadnoughts before, we've heard vintage instruments. 
the Authentic series, high glue instruments, they fill a room with sound and they, and they just sound tremendous. But this was something different. You know, the, the, the lift that it brought was just profound and we knew we needed to get out and hit the street and start telling that story. It's a, it's a great, it's hard to say it's an alternative to a dreadnought. It's just everything that, it's the best dreadnought that we can make right now. And that size and that increased air capacity just bring out more of what a dreadnought's all about. Three-piece backs, the, the body dimensions being the largest that we produced, we ran into some challenges on the, on the first prototypes, being able to reliably select material that would be wide enough to accommodate the lower, the lower bout here was, was problematic. Um, so to help mitigate the potential for, uh, for issues there, uh, we thought we would be able to keep an equally elegant looking back using the three-piece strategy, which exists in our, in our history. It's part of our lexicon, so we use the zigzag uh, purfling on either side of the center wedge. Nice complement to the back, and it helps prevent any you know, unfortunate manufacturing snag we might hit if we were to run out of two-piece backs that were, that were wide enough to, to build this. So three-piece was the way to go. The binding is our antique white binding. Uh, it's the same material, same color that we share with our Authentic Series family of, of heritage instruments. Uh, in addition to the, uh, to the antique white binding, we have a brand new herringbone design that we formulated for this body size. Uh, it's a tricolor combination, uh, maple, uh, ebony, and all along the perimeter where our traditional herringbone is, um, is ebony and blonde maple. This is a three color combination. So it's really, really cool uh, the way it moves, almost like a snake, uh, the, uh, the black, uh, a light colored maple, and then a couple of segments of uh, rusty colored maple. So it's a, a gorgeous combination of colors and a great opportunity to showcase it on a, a brand new body platform. And one of the custom shop tricks that we, that we love to do on the instruments that we design uh, in my department will be a script pearl logo. So instead of you know, cutting it short and doing a decal on there, we like the application of a little bit of pearl. The instruments are, are, are specced uh, and pointed identically, the only difference being the back and side material. We have Guatemalan rosewood and high flame color.